The changes in Jessica's life started with one very pleasant experience. Jessica worked as a nurse in the trauma unit of a hospital, and every day she saw new patients who she always devoted her full attention to. Most of them didn't stay in the hospital for more than a month, but there were some exceptions. One such exception was the patient in the room at the end of the hall. This patient was a young man who had been admitted with severe head trauma two years earlier. Unfortunately, despite all the efforts of the hospital doctors, this young man had fallen into a coma, and no one could say when or if he would come out of it. Today was a special day in the life of the young man, and for good reason. For one, it was Jessica's birthday, and she was in an excellent mood. The biggest gift for Jessica, however, was the fact that the young man at the far end of the hall finally woke up from the coma. That's a real miracle. We've got to get Mr. Matthews, she exclaimed as she entered the hospital room in the morning. Soon, an entire medical council gathered around the bewildered and clueless young man. How do you feel? What's your name? Do you know what happened to you? Asked Mr. Matthews as he examined the patient. I feel fine, but I don't remember anything. I don't even know my own name. The young man replied, confused, feeling his head with his hands. Well, that's understandable, young man. You got here with a severe head injury, and temporary amnesia is something we often see with concussions, replied the doctor, making some notes on his clipboard. The young patient nodded understandingly and tried to get out of bed, but the sudden movements made the man feel dizzy, and if it weren't for Jessica, he would have collapsed on the floor. Don't rush, one thing at a time. You have all the time in the world, the nurse reassured him as she helped him back in bed. Over the past two years, Jessa had become so accustomed to this patient that she even invented a name for him, Michael. Deep down, she really took a liking to this young man, who had no clue about his past, and thus felt as if he was reborn. The patient even accepted the nurse's name for him and became Michael from there on out. It so happened that with no relatives in sight, Jessica was the closest person to him in the whole world. Time went by and the young couple became friends, and by the time the young man was discharged from the hospital, the nursing staff jokingly referred to them as the married couple. What began in the hospital walls soon transcended beyond them and continued to the delight of the nurse and the former patient. Why are you so fond of that sorry amnesiac? You should be chasing Patrick, Jessica's friend told her once. But the heart, as they say, has a will of its own. After all, it was Michael that Jessica was attracted to, while Patrick was just a friend to her. After being discharged from the hospital, Michael moved in with the young nurse who lived a modest and lonely life. The couple enjoyed each other's company and thanked fate for bringing them together. My love, I need to find a job. I can't keep being reliant on you. You've been nursing me back to health for two years now, said Michael after spending about a month in his girlfriend's house. I'll talk to Linda's brother. He works for a construction company and is considered an expert in plumbing. I think he could use an assistant like you, Jessica said, trying to reassure him. Patrick was sympathetic to Jessica's situation, and soon Michael was already mastering his new profession. Although Patrick was older, Michael was so determined to learn that he soon became almost as good as his teacher. Unfortunately for Michael, however, no matter how much he tried to remember his past, his memory never returned. But this didn't keep the young man from staying optimistic. He was hopeful that eventually he'd be able to put all the pieces together and remember who he was. One day, the construction company where Patrick and Michael worked was contracted to do some repairs at a home of a wealthy couple. The plan was to replace all the pipes and plumbing in the mansion, so Patrick and Michael were both sent there. Renovations were already underway. Workers had been moving furniture and building materials all throughout the house. To Michael's great surprise, a feeling of deja vu suddenly took over him and wouldn't go away. It intensified with each minute he spent in the mansion. He went from room to room and peered at all the walls as if he were trying to recognize something he had forgotten or experienced in the past. Suddenly in one of the rooms, Michael saw a photograph in a black frame standing on the table. At first, he thought it was mistaken, and what he saw was just a figment of his imagination. 
but taking a closer look, Michael realized that there was no mistake. Patrick's cry of surprise only confirmed his suspicions. As Michael peered into the photograph in the black frame, he realized that the person looking back at him from the photo was Michael himself. That can't be you, can it? Patrick asked with excitement in his voice. I don't know. I, I don't remember anything. Michael whispered, turning pale. At that moment, the manager, who was in charge of all the repairs in the absence of the owners, entered the room. Excuse me, but who's this guy in the photograph? Michael timidly asked. Oh, that's Stanley, the late owner of the house. They say that his car was found ablaze three miles away from the city. They were never able to find Mr. Green, and to be honest, I don't think anyone ever will. It's been two years, answered the manager, looking suspiciously at Michael. By now, the manager had noticed the striking resemblance between the young plumber and the man in the photos. At that moment, a bright flash went through Michael's brain. Wincing in pain, he clutched at his head and sank into a nearby chair. Michael, what's going on? Are you sick? Patrick exclaimed anxiously, touching his friend's shoulder. But Michael couldn't respond as the avalanche of painful memories started pouring back into his head. The manager looked anxiously at the plumber and couldn't believe his eyes. Michael had already remembered that his real name was Stanley and that in reality, he was a successful businessman, not a plumber. The images and events that swirled through the young man's mind eventually led him to the hospital bed in the trauma unit. On that fateful evening, Stanley, a successful businessman at the time, returned from work earlier than usual and intended to surprise his wife. Seeing the light burning in the bedroom windows, the young man smiled, anticipating a pleasant romantic evening and a night full of passion and love. But when Stanley entered the room, he was horrified to see his wife, Rebecca, wasn't alone in bed. The unfaithful wife's lover turned out to be her personal chauffeur, Joseph, who had been hired by the couple six months earlier. In a flash of rage, Stanley lunged at Joseph with his fists. Joseph was scared out of his wits and didn't put up much of a fight, which allowed Stanley to get a couple of heavy hits in. Then, someone hit Stanley hard on the head from behind, and he collapsed on the floor, bleeding profusely. Joseph's unexpected savior was Rebecca, who had hit her husband with his bronze trophy, which he got for getting a third place in the citywide swimming competition. Joseph quickly regained his senses and, seeking revenge, started beating the unconscious businessman. Realizing that they had just committed a heinous crime, the two lovers decided to dispose of Stanley's body. Fortunately for Stanley, Rebecca and Joseph didn't know that he was still alive. After loading the hapless businessman's body into the trunk, they drove him out of town in Rebecca's car under the cover of night and dumped him in a roadside ditch. However, when the lovers returned, they realized that they had one unfortunate mistake. Stanley's car was still parked in front of the house and was a clear indication that the businessman hadn't gone anywhere. So, Joseph and Rebecca drove out of town in two cars and burned Stanley's Chevrolet. This mistake may have saved the businessman's life. After all, if they had loaded Stanley's body into his own car, there likely wouldn't have been any chance for him. And so, some roadside workers found the businessman lying in a ditch the next morning and called an ambulance. Unfortunately, Stanley didn't have any documents on him to prove his identity. Thus, the trauma unit doctors treated him as a John Doe for almost two years. All this flashed through Stanley's mind in a matter of seconds. With a cheerful look at the manager, the young man said, Mr. Hopkins, I do indeed own this house. The thing is, I was attacked, and my memory had escaped me. This is no longer the case, and I need you to keep everything you've learned today to yourself, at least for the next couple of days. I would very much appreciate it, Mr. Hopkins. Mr. Hopkins was an understanding man and immediately agreed to help the businessman. Stanley learned from him that Rebecca and Joseph have left on vacation to the Bahamas and were to return in a couple of days. Stanley was most shocked by the fact that his unfaithful wife was pregnant with a child, the father of which, judging by the timing, could only be the treacherous chauffeur, Joseph. 
time to get even, Stanley muttered, clenching his fists. Patrick, numb with shock, stood beside Stanley, not knowing how to proceed. Patrick had never seen his partner so full of determination before. For the first time in two years, Stanley regained his self-confidence and learned the secrets of his past. Enlisting Patrick's support, the young businessman went to his parents' house, who had long considered him dead. His parents were overjoyed to see their son after two years of being apart. Though Stanley's story seemed unbelievable to them, it was true from beginning to end. Jessica was equally happy, as she had found a loving and caring husband and a former patient who had lost his memory. To Stanley's surprise, his new wife also had something in store for him. I'm pregnant, honey, Jessica whispered, hugging her beloved husband. And when Jessica and Joseph finally returned from their vacation in the Bahamas, the lovers were met at the airport by a group of police officers who immediately handcuffed them. By then, Stanley had already provided the police with the necessary evidence, and the couple's arrest was inevitable. Realizing that Jessica's son would have no parents, Stanley took the young boy into his custody and loved him as if he were his own. Stanley had long dreamed of having children, and now, when the ultrasound revealed that he was going to have a daughter, he was unspeakably happy that he and Jessica would be joined by a boy who had become a brother to the newborn baby. That meant that Stanley's new house would now be filled with the sound of cheerful children and their ringing, joyful laughter.